Hi everybody, this is a book I wanted to share with you in case you're looking for some ideas for inventions. It's called Girls Think of Everything, Stories of Ingenious Inventions by Women. So I'm going to share a little bit with you today. Okay. In the beginning, with the push you are free, bursting into the world, scrunched up and screaming. It's a girl, the doctor announces, or it's a boy. And so your life began. And with those very breaths and in those very moments, your health and well-being were evaluated through the eyes of an ingenious inventor, Dr. Virginia Apgar. Dr. Apgar developed the newborn screening system, or Apgar score to measure five crucial aspects of baby's health, color, pulse, reflexes, activity, and respiration. She recognized the urgency of identifying those newborns in need of emergency attention. And because of her innovation, hundreds of thousands of lives have been saved. Today, all medical professionals evaluate a new baby using the APGAR score within minutes of birth. Right from the get-go, a woman's invention inventiveness and ingenuity touched your life, but that was only the beginning. Whether in medicine or science, household products or high-tech gadgets, women invent, and their inventions surround us and affect our everyday lives. They have created cancer-fighting drugs, space helmets, coffee makers, and disposable diapers. Women have invented games and toys and computer software programs. Inventors create for a variety of reasons. Maybe you've heard the phrase, necessity is the mother of invention. It's true. An inventor sees a need and seeks to fill it. A long time ago, before there were record keepers or materials to keep records on, people went about their daily lives. And in doing so, they invented. According to oral tradition, as well as observations and studies conducted by anthropologists, women were responsible for some of the most fundamental and enduring innovations of all. Because of their responsibilities within their families and communities, it appears that women were the first to invent tools and utensils, including the mortar, a heavy bowl, a pestle, a club-like hammer to prepare food, such as flour, and botanical medicines. They spun cotton together with flax, thereby inventing cloth, and they created the first shelters by designing and constructing huts and wigwams. It was said that women were the first to discover dyes to color cloth and tanning methods to make leather goods. But many inventions evolve out of general curiosity, a sense of interest, a sense of wouldn't it be fun if and then, of course, there are the accidents, the mistakes and happenstances that someone notices and develops. Take the ice cream cone, for example. As the story goes, one day in 1904 at the World's Fair in St. Louis, Missouri, a young lady whose name remains a mystery struggled to eat her ice cream sandwich and carry a bouquet of flowers. So she took the top of the cookie and wrapped it around the flowers, creating an impromptu vase. Then she wrapped the remaining cookie around the ice cream so it wouldn't drip on her dress. And there it was, the very first ice cream cone. The ice cream vendor had run out of bowls, witnessed her ingenuity, and soon began selling ice cream cones to eager passers-by. Okay, so I'm going to read to you about a woman who invented Kevlar. Stephanie Kolek. Skillfully gliding down a snow-packed mountain, a skier is unaware of the amazing material improving the performance of her skis. It is a mysterious material found also in airplanes and athletic shoes, in tires and ropes and gloves, in boats, boots, and bulletproof vests. It's strong, incredibly strong, bullet-stopping strong. It is also flexible and light. It can shave 800 pounds off an aircraft frame. A material that was once a mere fiction found only in Superman's suit is now a fact. Thanks to Stephanie Kolek. 
inventor of Kevlar. We now have a fiber that is five times stronger than seal and used in everything from skis and sailboats to space vehicles. As a research chemist for the DuPont company, Stephanie was assigned to find the next generation high performance fiber. At that time, we had heard that there was the potential for a petroleum shortage, explained Stephanie. We were thinking that if we could get a strong and very stiff lightweight fiber, then we could use it to reinforce radial tires. This would make the tires lighter and therefore you would use less energy because the vehicle would be lighter. Stephanie spent a few months experimenting with very stiff chain polymers. A polymer is a chemical compound made up of repeating structural units. One day, she prepared an unusual solution. When she stirred the solution, it turned opulescent, pearl-like. When she put some on a spatula and let it flow freely, it was cohesive, like glue. It was also very thin, like water. Amazingly, it was a liquid crystalline solution, part liquid, part solid. Stephanie immediately thought that DuPont could spin the solution into fiber, but when she took it to a technician, he refused to put it in the spinning apparatus, claiming that the cloudiness and texture of the solution meant there were still bits of solid particles in it, material that would clog the tiny holes of the spinneret. I went back to the laboratory and I thought, well, maybe he does have a point, Stephanie said, so I filtered it. And I found that when the solution passed through a fine pour glass funnel, it was just as cloudy on the other side. So I knew it didn't have solid material in it. Stephanie talked to the technician on and off for a couple of weeks, gently prodding and persuading him to spin her solution. Finally, he agreed. Once the fibers were made, she sent them to the physical testing lab to have the properties determined, properties like strength and stiffness. The results were astonishing. She had the fibers tested again and again. What I, when I got the numbers back, I was rather skeptical, she recalled. I thought maybe they'd made a mistake and I certainly didn't want to embarrass myself by telling anyone. As it turned out, Stephanie didn't embarrass herself. She had invented a remarkable technology and as a result, a fiber that would forever change the field of polymer chemistry and make millions of dollars for DuPont. She was awarded with a generous bonus and a long overdue promotion. Many people came on board during the development phase and Stephanie was quick to point out that some of them made very significant contributions to the final product. There was a tremendous amount of excitement in the lab as well as secrecy. And were there any problems? There were millions, said Stephanie laughing. Many times we almost gave up because it was such a contrary fiber. And of course, before you can commercialize something, the whole process and product have to be very reliable. Every step was a challenge, she said. Every step a learning process. In 1971, Kevlar fiber was spun in the DuPont plant for the first time. Today, all you need to do is look around. Kevlar is everywhere. It is used in more than 200 products, including sailboats, rackets, and racing cars. In downhill skis, woven layers of Kevlar reduce weight and lessen vibration. In athletic shoes, it gives stronger and more flexible foot support and dis disperses shock. In fact, the product can be used whenever and wherever a very strong, stiff, lightweight fiber is needed. Any ideas where? So this is a really important invention. Um, it also relates to the science that we've been studying. If we look back at this part, her solution, she had to filter it because of the, the testing of the properties. It had lots of solid particles in it. So when she filtered it, she realized it was still cloudy. So that meant that it was dissolved. And then when they, they went and tested it, the properties had such strength and stiffness that she was really astonished. Um, so lots of science related to this invention. So think about something that we've been learning about and maybe that will give you an idea for an invention you would like to study.